A new Monster Hunter game? A new Monster Hunter game. A new Monster Hunter game? A new Monster Hunter game. One new Monster Hunter game? Probably gonna be multiple in the future, but right now is one. When new Monster Hunter game? 2025, we will have six, which is one. I can't count that high. How many, how many days? Uh, 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 Eleven. Did you use all 12 of your fingers? Yes. I'm so excited. That sounds like it's really soon. I mean, it depends how you count time. I count it backwards. That must be difficult. <laughs> yeah, it's really, it's past really past difficult. Well, actually, everything's kind of already happened and I have to work strange. from it. So are we going to talk about the 12 fingers thing or no? I mean, radiation. How did you know that I got radiation? Isn't that what the pink is from? Well, yeah, I mean, it, it was green at one point, but I, I decided that that was a bit too aggressive, so I went the other hazardy color. Pink is the color of radiation, right? Uh, I mean, it, it, as long as you get a good bomb. I... It's gonna be a long video. Well, this is wild! <laughs> nah, nah. Nah, I'm actually... Never mind, nah. <laughs> no, come back, my friends! No! Please! Alright everybody, welcome to a very special pro and noob and noob nooba? I, I guess we'll go with noob. I thought you were gonna say boob. Yes. Sorry, right. pro, pro noob, noob and, and boob. boob. Pro noob and boob. That's the latest That's how we get the marketing rates up. That's the latest I twist. You, I think you were gonna and then you thought better of it. <laughs> we both know I don't think better of anything. Definitely not better of boob. Stop! Twist, stop twisting, <laughs> stop twisting! Don't say that. I'm just uncomfortable. Any case, today all we thought we do is gather round, including uh, Hollow, who doesn't often grace us with his presence because he's often too busy to give us any attention. Now is a very special exception. We dragged him here. Yeah, we, <laughs> we dragged yeah. him here. We begged, <laughs> we begged <laughs> screaming. It's a very special ex exception where he still doesn't have the time, <laughs> but we forced him kicking and screaming into the room. <laughs> So if Monster in the Wild's revealed, it is a big enough deal by far to get round, have a little chat, do some theories, get excited, and, you know, that stuff. I love that stuff. First and foremost, let's have a watch and a react. Oh, I love these little guys. <laughs> the birds. It's the birds the best part. God, I've only watched this 73 times. I know, right? And the thing is, like, the first, the first time we actually did watch this together... Because we were all watching the Game Awards when this happened. It's true, and none of us knew what it was. I, I missed so many of the things. Hey, that's not, that's not, we knew what it was eventually. We we were all <laughs> like, something's wrong, and we couldn't put place it's it. It's like, this this looks familiar, but uh, but what but what is it exactly? Uh, the Great Swords really is the, the giveaway. Yeah, I don't know, it's just the way he's moving on this mount. I'm like, is this the last fantasy? The new last fantasy? The final fantasy? If you will. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I could totally see the lightning lightning catcher herbivores in, in Final Fantasy. I'm, I'm interested to see what you guys have picked up on because I'm just, you know, I've only watched it three times, which is a small number compared to you. Honestly, I'm surprised you said three. That is quite, yeah, that is quite a small amount. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, that's more than I expected. Okay, uh, if you had to guess, Aaron, then, with your three watches, how many monsters do you think are in this in this trailer? Yeah. <laughs> Minimum three. That is that is a correct answer. Wait, are you asking him how many, like, literally, like, count all of the herd? Oh, like different, different times. I'm not doing that. Are you insane? Okay, I paused. All right, Aaron, count the uh, count the herb of us, please. We'll be back <laughs> in five minutes. A few moments later. Ah, uh, that's close. It was actually 65. I I would believe you knew. Why 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 are you going <laughs> like it's this is a game show? Like oh, you almost had it, but sadly you don't win the boat. Unfortunately, you got beaten by the two serpents on screen. You had a better guess with the six in the middle. I didn't count those two. Ah, <laughs> oh, there you go. And look, it's a it's a new large dragon. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I fucking love that. Guys, this might be the final big bad of the game, but I'm not sure. Little side tangent here, guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna put on screen a beautiful review of this trailer by an unnamed publication. Full understanding that sometimes game journalists are asked to cover things they maybe don't know things about. You can also see a large dragon fly at the end, but whether it's the big bad of the game isn't clear. Yeah, I, I think this statement has a lot of truth to it. <laughs> Rathalos can be described as a large dragon, so that's technically correct. And it is also unclear if he is the big bad of the game or not, because we haven't played it. So it's it, it's a 0.00001% possibility. Look, I, I'm not. It's not like haha. You didn't know what a Rathalos is, but it, it feels like basic research. Two minute Google. We're less making fun of them and more just the situation is funny itself. 
Anyway, can't wait for all the color to just suddenly exist randomly when you're playing. Oh, it's it's uh, it's the it's the storms, Aaron. I'll have you know. Oh, I hate this screen so much. What you don't like 2025? I, I will like 2025 when we're in 2025. But now I have to well, what, get rid of a whole year. Well, if, if we just like flip that that last number upside down, then it's already happened. Just cryostasis. All right. Well, there's plenty to talk about, including like a lot this of logo. logo. <laughs> you know, that's like a that's like a whole so many so many parts whole of the logo. section. But before we what? get to anything specifically, I I want I want each of your your hot takes. Monster Hunter Six will be not good. I, what? <laughs> <laughs> Is that a hot take? I mean, I guess that is a hot take, but I don't think it's one you believe uh, in. The one that I stand by is that this is in, like, an area inspired by Africa in the Monster Hunter universe. Ooh, dangerous See, today. I, yeah, but but do you not think that the, the logo dragons here are very kind of mayan esque I agree with that as well. I've also seen people say Australia, but the, the main thing that I stick to, because I think all of them are okay guesses, but the first new monster they show is the pangolins, and pangolins in the real world only exist in Africa and Asia. <laughs> Oh, you've done it research. And that could be that could be going too far into it. it. It absolutely could be, but that's assuming they are strictly pangolin. Well, sure, they're probably something else. They're not literally just pangolins, but they're clearly pangolins. Like I, they can't, they clearly can't roll because they've got big ass spikes on their back. No, but they do walk around with a little like, "Can you please help me, sir?" type of type of walk. And I think that, that pangolins are known to perpetually look like they've just committed a crime everywhere they go. But like not like a major crime. Like they just accidentally shoplifted and they feel very guilty about it. And <laughs> they're it's like, too embarrassed. To, to go do. to go back with the item, even though they've just just rendered it. The monster hunter is identical to the monster hunter in World, which that it is. Which you know, Monster Hunter World Two? Question mark. I hate that term. <laughs> if you look at Wilds and you see the mirror, and then you look at the S, it's like, oh, that looks like That's a two. True. It does look like a two. <laughs> now, obviously, it's not but literally the... Monster Hunter World Two in any yeah, capacity, it's, it's... but it's the exact same font. It's obviously the next mainline yeah. series, and World and Icebot is clearly the new standard to be evolved on. There's the Scout Fly Cage. There's the Slinger. Like, it's it's definitely spiritually world based. In a technical sense, it is the sequel to World. In that World is basically a reboot of the series. Like, if it feels like with World, they were like, we want to have as big a world as we can we want to make it feel alive and crazy and this is bigger and there's so many more monsters in the area it, it's just fucking incredible i can't wait to see more of that side of things where do you uh where do you sit on open world yay or nay i think it can work definitely for a monster in a game and we've wanted like massive regions and then after rise where you've got the biggest maps we've seen that with more depth and detail would be really, really fun. And I mean, personally, I was really concerned with Elden Ring and that being open world for Soul series. I think it's proven That's that it works. That's actually a really good point. This might be the Elden Elden Ringification of Monster Hunter. The Elden the Ringing. open world's the trend, so we're going to make this much beloved franchise open world. It's like, oh no, oh wow, it's actually amazing. Yeah, I was, I was about to say, I have no concerns about that. Like, it seems like such a perfect fit that they've been trying to do for years. Like, like world feels like they were trying to go there, they were taking a step in, and now they're diving right deep into the pool. Yeah, it feels like they finally t bloomed full Breath of the Wild syndrome in Monster Hunter, because that's what started every game needing an open world. Yeah, version. I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it, it works. And you've got a gliding mount, which I will keep incessantly saying means that it's definitely open world, because every open world game requires a glider. But that's not every game with a glider is an open world game. Well, you know, there are, there are, there are exceptions to every hard and fast rule. Look, but can you imagine Monster Hunter where, and this is this is my hot take, okay? I mm -hmm. think the only time that you will see a loading screen outside of literally loading into game from you know the start menu is yeah. if you fast yeah. travel. I, I I agree with that. That's what I imagine from a proper open world Monster Hunter. Because like the thing is, there are like open world like hunting simulator games, and they essentially just have to emulate that idea of like a giant reserve, but with different biomes, and then you know a, a nice hub area. But what I like mean more specifically is even in the world where there's only one map, and it's like a, a giga guiding lines, mm -hmm. like what we're kind of looking at here. But you still don't even yeah, have the separation yeah. of loading from Giga Guiding Lands to Hub and then loading from Hub to Giga Guiding Lands. I think the Hub will just be a, a, a location mm -hmm. on Giga Guiding Lands. Just one. And I think a, a big thing that points into that is something that I've said quite a bit, is if you look at both the right and the left side of the mount, on the right side you can see a gun, which implies that there's some sort of equipment fiddling from the mount. On the left side he's got a little supply pouch, which sort of looks like an item box. Yeah, yeah, roaming supplies. And if you're hungry, you just, like, bite into the animal. <laughs> yeah, you just you just <laughs> eat it, and then you <laughs> I really thought you were about to make, like, a really, like, oh, no, everyone's missed this. 
I just did. Yeah, no one has actually said out loud that you should eat your mount. And if you have a map like Hyrule in Tears of the Kingdom or the Lands Between, you can't have set tent areas because you either get them perfect or it would be really annoying. Yeah. So just being or you able put to them where you want. Yeah. So being able to just pop up your tent from the gear on the back of your mount is incredible. Really cool idea. I mean, my favorite it, yeah. take on the mount so far is. Oh, look, there's a bowgun, and the mount's got thumbs, so clearly the mount's yeah, the, gonna yeah, the use mount's the bowgun. Genius, yeah. genius, genius. <laughs> my my favorite thing that I've seen so far from this, and from the idea of, like, a proper open-world monster hunter, is just the absolute density of monsters just everywhere. Like, that's what yeah, I've always that, wanted that really from Monster Hunter. It, it feels you kind of so need good. That. You can't you have do. just you can't three have maximum feeling. large monsters on a map if it's open world. Mm -hmm. Which is why I do think that the Bear Boys are large monsters, because you have to be able to have lots yeah. of large monsters. The more I look at them, the more I agree. I think they're a really low-tier large monster, but I do think they're a large monster. And they've got really freaky jaws. But, like, the idea yeah, of, of yeah. going through a frosty area and seeing, like, three Gosserags, like, running from something. Oh, my God. It'd be crazy. <laughs> Looking at the big, the big old, big old plane to really hammer home the the guiding lands. You've got the the like the plains and the green trees and stuff, right? And then at the back left, you've got a mountain with snow on it. And then at the back right, you've got actual genuine desert, desert with dunes. Yeah. So maybe the entire map is this, and it's a like donut shape round this central mysterious like whole mm. whole mountain. And the the fucking and the center hole will be our guiding lands equivalent endgame area, probably. The center hole will be our endgame. <laughs> hey, but while we're here, man made or natural? Uh, I'm on I'm on man made because the lightning rod things feel way too man made, and I think that that obviously yeah. But the swirly circle over. still looks rocky. Like it doesn't look to me. I think it was a, a ma like a proper normal mountain, and something has blasted this whole. thing. I think it looks like a monster's done that to it. Yeah, yeah. I mm -hmm. think the the final boss, which might I coincidentally guess... also be the source of the lightning storms. It's a it's a giant like uh, what what are those things with bristles that shoot them out. Porcupines. An electric porcupine and those <laughs> sticks that are like lightning. Rods, those are yep, just you know world, the, the pines. Well, the thing yeah. is, it's very like the hole through it is very circular, right? And obviously, the the dragons in question are well, snaky, so like it could be as literally simple as they've just flown through it, yeah. And that's just I mean, the shape of their body. What I was thinking was less that the, the like the, the destruction, I think, is monster cause, but I think the lightning rods indicate to me that there might have been some other man made stuff. And like, what if that was something meant to hold something in? Yeah, that's true. I mean, the fact that the, the pillars of lightning have like text on them and like writing. And, yeah. And could we just get this out the way, please? Like, it, yeah, the it, fucking, the, what, the pangolin tanking the lightning bolt? No, no, that is that's incredible. But the the yeah. fact that the the pillars have lightning oh, on yeah. and the sandstorm and it, it it's uncomfortably close to the monster hunter movie. Yeah. And we just it's while it doesn't the color exist, of the lightning if it in were the to exist, please could we just get this out the way? Surely not. Okay, please. Yeah, there's a, there's like a there's like a one percent chance this story has anything to do with the monster hunter movie. It can't be. It just it can't be. <laughs> okay, man, I do like that it's bipedal when you're going slow, and then all four when you're sprinting. Yeah, it's it's, it's interesting. Like, are you are you team one mount of many or trusted companion singular throughout the I prefer game? to have one mount, one one animal. Like personally, I, I would have been fine without the palicos, and you know. Whoa, whoa, whoa! whoa. Uh, you just no you just upset a lot of people. <laughs> I mean, I'd love to see a Palamute, but, you know, I'm not too bothered about Palico. That is the, My like, question is, what what kind of Pali combination of word are they going to use for this thing? Yeah, I, I think it's pa Palodrome? Pal palodrome? You think that's a drone? Pal palindrome? It's like a raptor bird thing. Yeah, but they, they are known as the drones. Yeah, but but th that's the same thing with Bulldrome. That's not a raptor thing. Yeah, that's true. I mean, there might not be a mini mini version. Of I think it. Pal I think Pal I think Palaka is the answer. Like, it's going to start with the phrase "pally" something. The question is, can we can we either a change its coloring or b can it have of armor? Co of course, you can customize it. Of course, you can customize it. Like, will it be the level of like world where you finish making your hunter and then it pops up with your 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 pally raptor and it's like now edit your pally raptor or will you like tame and find it? as one of the opening things that you do in the game. I think it's probably a mix of that where you'll tame one and then be able to customize it. As for like... I mean, you know, in an open world game, they always do the same thing. You start with no movement, no mobility, and mm -hmm. then you get a little mm -hmm. bit more and a little bit more, and then eventually you get the mount or whatever. I mean, maybe you save it from, from some threatening monster you can't quite handle at the start of the game, but you do enough to, to drive it away, and that's what 
befriends it, or just hunters in this region all have these and they're tamed and that's just a normal way of life. Yeah, so that's entirely possible. But it'd be right? cooler if it was like a new early game monster, like a tier one monster that you have to be. Well, yeah, it would be like an Izuchi equivalent, but I, 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 I like the idea of multiple mounts because like, this one has a lot of the hallmarks of good movement, but I feel like there's like, there is the idea of growth. Like Aaron was saying, like you unlock more as you go further. Maybe we could get more mounts with more versatility. Like this one can't actually fly, it can only glide. What if we do get one later on that can actually fly? Or if there's a swimming mount, if there's a possibility of underwater somewhere, maybe. You've got Palicos and, and Palamutes, though I think Palamutes are definitely mm -hmm. just a spin-off thing and they're gone. Sadness. They level up, and you give them abilities, and you give them armor and stuff, and obviously they get stronger as you go along, but they're still kind of side pieces. Mm -hmm. Like, I can't imagine this guy is going to be so interactive with the combat yeah. itself to the point that he needs constant upgrading more than he is just... Like, are we going to, like, whistle him in and, and mount mm -hmm. up, or is he just perpetually going to the be there? Palicos and Palamutes, I, I, what I think is interesting is, like, I have said a couple of times, like, it is possible there's no Palicos in this game because there's none in this trailer, and if you think about it logically, if this is supposed to be, like, a, a, a mobile tent setup and you're supposed to start hunts from here, it'd be a lot better if your Palico was actually, like, riding with you than if it just, like, pops into existence when you yeah, get there off is, the map. There is zero percent chance that they don't put the most marketable thing in a month Monster Hunter game in a Monster Hunter game. You're so right. No Palicos in this game, thank God. Everyone not named Hello loves the Palicos. I'm not saying they shouldn't be or that they won't be. I'm just saying I wish they were represented in the mounted movement because they probably will be in the game. Like, imagine if there was, like, a little pouch on the front of the bird and it was just, like, it was just in it. Yeah, I think they will just be on, like, behind you on the saddle. Like, I I, I just think they don't have Palicos with them, with them right now. So Aaron will be happy about that. Yeah, this is my character, <laughs> I guess. The real question is, what if they go all in on the mount and every weapon just has a moveset while mounted and it's perfectly reasonable I mean, or even expected to hunt monsters while mounted. I think it's entirely possible. And it's not like ride to the monster and then hop off and fight it normally then hop back on. My opinion on that is I think there'll probably be like some cinematic like almost siege monster fight where to keep up with the monster you have to stay on your mount to fight it. Oh yeah, I bet there will be. I definitely think there'll be a, a like especially with the monster, gliding a, and everything. A monster that needs the mobility of the mount to keep up with it. Mm -hmm. But I think if just default hunting was mounted, that would probably not land well with not, most yeah, people. Yeah, would not, not go well, no. Like, if it was an option, sure. If it's, like, the best option, uh, no. <laughs> but then the question becomes, when we look at the two weapons, are you going to be... Are you going to be swapping them, like, mid-fight? Like, a, a combo that you sheaf mm. one and draw the other mid-fight? Or you have to commit to whatever you start the hunt with? Well, that's silly because I already have two blades in my hands. So what am I going to do? Put <laughs> put my hand in a bag and pull out two more blades. Like, whether, I mean, yeah, you could. Whether you're forced to have two different categories of weapon or just Oh, you're right. Weapons, yeah, I'll swap element. I'll yeah, swap that's element, what I'm yeah. saying. For me, there will just be a great sword on my back and a great <laughs> sword in the pouch. <laughs> I'm also saying the same thing. No, mechanical little like thing. Instead of wasting time sharpening, pull out the second copy of the oh same weapon God. that's at full sharpness, Incredible. and there Jeez. we go! Well, Speedrunner so strat! That works into what I was going to say, because the way I see this is it's probably just like a weapon is a representation of the idea, but realistically it's probably an entire loadout set, like an entire equipment set, like an entirely different build, so you don't have to use the same skills for two weapons. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, that's entirely possible. I mean, moveset-wise, <laughs> do you think we're just going to get World and Iceborne again, but a bit extra? I'm sure thing is like in invasive. I mean, I'm really gonna miss the aerial attacks of Silpines. Yeah, that's what I'm saying because that's that's going away, and yeah. whether they put in any well, kind of move set customization or not. Well, yeah, the customization is definitely. We don't have any idea from the trailer, obviously, but I think as far as replacing the wire bugs, there is a slinger on the hunter, and some people have said it almost looks like there might be a clutch claw as well. And if that's the case, please no. No, what, but but you know, hear me out for a second. What if instead of the clutch claws it used to be, it's instead the clutch claw like the way that silk binds were, where you use it to augment your moves purposefully as part of the move set, rather than just jump on the monster and throw it into a wall. Yeah, I mean anything's better than the ice bomb clutch. Yeah, I'm just saying that they could literally make it the exact same concept as, as as wire bugs like you can use it to pull to the monster and stuff like you can do cool stuff with that like i i adore riozo obviously but the man went okay is the clutch cloth fun for hammer cool i'll see you guys later i don't see a problem with that <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah it's crazy that <laughs> it's strange. It's really really strange but yeah honestly i mean to be fair also it was nice i did have like a combo where i just sort of slap them Ooh. with my jewel blades so you know i just apply it quickly 
So maybe it wasn't so bad after all. But yeah, I think one of the first things that I genuinely want answered, more than even what the flagship is, is how two weapons work. See, for me, is is there a new weapon? Yeah, that's true. But like, you've got this this sliding scale all the way from yeah, there you is can a only lot of switch weapon in your in your camp that you set up, and it's just represented here as as your mm. loadouts bag that work in the camp. All the way to your mid combo, press a button, the mount rushes in, and you switch weapons mid attack, and ev think, everything in between. And that where it falls think, on that scale yeah. is going to be so defining. The thing is, that scale isn't even linear either, because there's also the side option of it's none of those things. It's actually always a bow gun, and you can attack with it from the back of the mount, no matter what weapon you're using in your build. That's actually a really good point. Yeah, maybe they do just want you to. Maybe it's not even literally a light bow gun. It's a mount mm -hmm. bow gun. You know, it's like a, a, mount, mount a weapon. yeah, mm -hmm. a unique one for the mount itself. Like a medium bow gun that is specific to come for the full mount. circle that it can use. <laughs> medium bow thumbs. gun that it can in fact use the gun. Yeah, you use it while you're riding it. Once you get off of it, it starts using the gun. <laughs> I'm interested to see whether there's an element system that's new or different based on the lightning that was hitting these rods when you're chased. You're running away. There's something different about it that feels a little bit more invasive on your existence. Maybe yeah. because we're in an over open world game, you'll just get hit by yeah, I, kind of terrain elements. Yeah. But so, yeah. visually, it's just different to anything we've seen with elements. Yeah, mm -hmm. clearly weather is going to be a huge factor. Like, it's going to probably change suddenly in the middle of a hunt. Like, you're not even going to yeah. notice it. And then a sandstorm whips across your screen and now all shit lightning. Yeah, and, and you were talking about that. the snow mountains. I'm hoping we'll have some like ridiculous blizzards to deal like, with. Like there as will well. be an armor yeah. skill that attracts lightning and powers you up at a cost or oh, something. Probably, like there'll yeah. definitely be things. It'll like be that. the little small monsters armor from yeah. the Tangle. Yeah, yeah it's just it normal, will, yeah. like lightning normal mounts. armor, Josh. <laughs> just wearing metal armor, you'll attract the lightning. <laughs> but the interesting thing is, in Frontier, there is a map that has a permanent lightning yep. storm that does target and strike you and monsters as you hunt. And this seems like a that. much. <laughs> much more advanced version of that which makes me think that frontiers influence isn't going to stop at sunbreak even if it's only with the frontier devs especially like a lot of them have been mixed into like the other teams with monster hunter as well i don't think there's any reason they wouldn't use that knowledge and that experience and try and bring the good stuff to the main series also i look forward to the inevitable i've killed large monster x by only using lightning strikes i do really think it's time for a 15th weapon i think like, so it's it's the it's the if right you're gonna moment. go this expansive it's the fucking lightning rods. You pull one out of the ground and use them as like a battering ring. I would also happily take a six element and status just to really, really diversify. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. I could see that. And there's lots of examples in the spinoffs that they could uh, they could use yeah, for that too. I, I want earth. I really want earth element. I liked the whole light and darkness thing in Frontier. Yeah, light and darkness in Frontier is good. And I realize it's hard to distinguish earth element from just raw, mm -hmm. but just, just something. Like, I guess it just... would be like the mud. <laughs> Like, it'll diversify It'd the weapon. It'd be a mud trees. wizard monster. Yeah. Like, high, high stagger or KO element. Yeah, that's actually a really good point. It could just all be about the, the raw impact of it, not so much more adding oh, damage. Oh, imagine if it being an earth weapon would turn a sharp weapon into a bludgeoning weapon. Like, it does bludgeoning damage as an element. All right, if you, uh, what 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 monster do you think is going to return, whether you like it or not? Uh, what's, what's the name of that, like, uh, coiling snake? Najarala? Yeah, yes. Yeah, no, I think that's quite. That a good was one. that was what I was about to say. I, yeah, I would. I, I be think he's probably the most likely. From blown away if the snake wyverns don't come back in wild. Yeah, I mean, we also haven't even talked about the logo, which is where where part of that comes from as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The logo, yeah, the logo is definitely coming up. So, okay, now Gerala. I mean, I've, I've I've got a whole list I could go through if you want. My my big one, and this is something that I want, is just the concept of siege monsters in general. Like the size of these maps makes me feel like a siege monster could walk on it like a normal monster. Well, and yeah, fight the you thing is, there you could have way. a siege monster without the need for a special map to house exactly. it. Exactly. Like, they could just walk through. Like, Lao Shen Lung could walk between those cliffs yeah, on like the right side. Yeah, like, imagine getting ambient so cool. siege monsters. Like, it's not part of your hunt. You can just see it in the distance. Yeah, they're just random spawn. Like any no, it's, large it's just terrain, be. and I'm fighting a Nogi Gante on this back. And we could call it, like, Mora Bagdaros. Nah, no. That's <laughs> 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 not. The... the and the map is the sliding lands. The sli I mean, it basically is the sliding Hell lands. Hell yeah. <laughs> For Tony Hawk's Monster Hunter. I, I think oh, that'd be so good. <laughs> I think Legia Chris has to come back. 
everyone needs it to happen. Like it's the only. Flagship well, I mean, if, I'm looking at I'm looking at this absolute desert and <laughs> yeah. that tiny puddle. I'm thinking that's where water is. monsters. <laughs> I think he will. I agree because mostly because for World, all the way back at World, they had that one technical trailer thing where they showed Legia Chris coiling up on the engine app. It was like, this is hype, and they're like, well, we, we can't make him work. And then for Rise and Sunbreak, they also didn't make him work. So I feel like they're trying really, really hard this time around to actually make him work. Anyway, yeah, Plessy both. off, Durotodus, can't wait, my favorite monsters. <laughs> Plessy off, absolutely. I, I think Plessy <laughs> off will be in this one. That is that is one of mine as See, well. I think the interesting question is, will anything from Rise and Sunbreak immediately make the transition to Monster Number 6? Some some must. Some yeah, must. There are some that will, but it's not that's not what I personally want. I always want a larger gap. Like I I want to see Gameth. It's the only faded four that has been brought back. We've got a clear snow mountain. They the would be the right place. It's gonna be, yeah. giant be the zones. right place. Like Gameth would fit yeah. perfectly. <laughs> He's the big monster you're wanting, basically. The thing is, yeah. if this is New World located, which the similarities mm -hmm. to Monster No World would imply, then it's not a stretch to have World and Icebound monsters. Like, I think Nergi will be in it. I think it's an entirely possible we get, like, a full Garanginath without a regular Anginath type of thing going, where they stick in some of the funkier yeah, subspecies. Yeah, I'm totally for subspecies and variants about the base monster, like Crimson Globe mm -hmm, monsters. Same. Like, I think that leaves more spaces open while bringing in interesting things we might not have fought as much, because they weren't part of base. Especially if we're talking about, like you said, with Crimson Glow, it's not necessarily a new monster, but it's a different monster. We've not seen it before. The question is, where the hell is the flagship? Uh, it's it's um Rathalos. It's the pangolin. Oh, it's Rathalos. Sorry, uh, sorry, sorry. My my mistake. Some unknown dragon could be the final boss. <laughs> uh, some sort of large dragon. Yeah. Like in nearly every monster hunter reveal, the flagships happened. In the world reveal, we didn't get Nergi. We just got Anjanath. But in nearly every other monster hunter reveal, we've got an instant flagship, and we've had stuff named and renders and like this yeah, is this is the most yeah. mysterious this is been. the least information we've had yeah like maybe I, he's on screen the whole time we just haven't noticed hey i wouldn't be against I mean, the, the mount being the be. flagship if i'm completely real with you what if, what if what if Eric's right the literal world is is in fact a giant monster <laughs> just a big Ten big tortoise that would that would be the flagship right yeah that would be a that would isn't be that what flagship. zara was <laughs> i don't quite about, yeah. wouldn't quite call him a flagship no, but turtle thing. Yeah, no, yeah, he yeah. was a he was yeah. a turtle monster, yeah, lava mountain turtle. Oh right. no, I I also think there's more interesting possibilities. Like this might be like a much more story driven monster hunter game than we've ever seen before. So it might be less about the flagship in the sense of here's just him, and it's more the build up to why the flagship matters. True, true, but I still think serpent will be some like a new serpent or like yeah. a. Eastern style dragon. Well, yeah, I mean, look at like this. That. Look at this logo. Yeah, 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 that's that's what I mean. yeah but the thing is, the thing is. Mm -hmm. Every Monster Hunter game has a logo that has as many monster heads as is the generation. The world logo has five monster the heads. The numbered titles, specifically, and yeah. It, the, the world logo, despite having five clear dragons in it, none of those dragons really represented anything actually in the game. Yeah. So it is entirely possible that this logo, that yes, it's six, six snaky, serpenty dragons in the shape of a six above and below. There, there's lots to read into, but it's entirely possible it's just a cool logo that represents six. And Impossible. It's not Impossible. actually well, like strictly connected to anything in the game because we've had examples of that with past Monster Hunter generation. While I agree, the bottom one is clearly not Jirala with those head frills. And also, <laughs> I like the concept of the top one, like being chained to little ones. So it's just like a flying serpent with chained little dragons attached to it. Please help. Please, I can't get them off. I would totally be down for another generation. What if it's generations just a two-headed snake? <laughs> run at a multi like flagship yeah. multi main monster like another fated four types in scenario sure though that was awesome so especially you if you've got a big that. open map with like distinct areas like yeah, yeah one for each area each, yeah well what i was yeah. about to say is with the map being the size that it is and how open we're expecting it bringing up generations ultimate is interesting because that game was obviously like a culmination where they included as many returning things as physically possible and i think if the world is this big they probably do want as big a variety as possible it would be neat if instead of a main story that's like a to b you've got mm -hmm. okay you've got four options do them in any order you'd like yeah the proper open world Hell, my, my wildest dream would be you help construct the yeah, hub make town. Your own hub. Mm -hmm. Yeah, make your own and hub. like yeah. choose what goes where and build things in order. Like any kind of injection of that, like a super extreme evolved version of the farm in Freedom Unite would, would just be the yeah. best thing in the world as far as I'm concerned. 
I guess another thing that's interesting to note that I've just not thought of until now, there's no, like, obvious literal gathering note at any point in this trailer. Yeah, unless the little little blue things. Yeah, the jumping platforms, potentially. Yeah. But, like, but like, there's no, like, this is a standard shape you will see everywhere. This is a plant that you recognize as something you will pick up. It's all, like, very... It, it folds into itself very nicely. And yeah, smooth. that's actually a really good point. I, I do think this might be a bit ancient civilization-y as well, and that might explain yeah, the lightning no, rods. Yeah. Like, what if the lightning rods literally exist to draw and keep keep tabs on the power <laughs> to, of whatever is causing them? To keep to keep the storms here so that they can keep telling people teleporting people in from Earth. <laughs> <laughs> please. Please stop it. Please. <laughs> Fun little fact. You're gonna find the runes of a Hummer in the background of one of these frames. <laughs> You see the little, like, platform that you glide onto here? This, like, weird sort of shaped thing. And the it same. looks almost Coral Highlands-y, doesn't That's it? That's not where I was going, but it does look That's a little where bit. where I'm going. But when lightning strikes sand or kind of loose ground, it, yep. it causes, like, this sort of weird rocky shape to form. It's called mm -hmm. Fulgurite. And if, if the implication is this is an Elder Dragon doing it, then it could have powerful enough lightning strikes that everything you're jumping across and gliding to isn't actually a natural pre-existing thing. It's just been created by mm. a massive ball of lightning. Terraforming boss. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. if we go to that level, imagine the actual moveset of a monster that can turn sand... I mean, it would be like an inverse of Sharish Valda almost, who made sand into a liquid, basically, where this one would turn it into a solid. Yeah, exactly. And the thing, the thing that I find really not suspicious you know it's not a, it's not a crime been committed right. uh -huh. is it looks like after the sand is cleared all the pangolins like almost spawn in no th i mean they're there you can see them there they're just re they're really they're really desaturated like there they are they're okay there. yeah no they are because i always thought yeah. they just kind of appeared like it was no there's, there's gonna be like there. a selection of monsters that has to populate each type of biome and they just kind of flood in when it is in that particular state oh i wonder what if, what if it is it's like it's all the biomes are like different biomes but the same storm goes through all of them and like you need to follow the storm to try and uncover the mysteries of why it's happening i actually still can't go over how big these herbivores are like they're taller oh, yeah, they're, than they're, the hunter on big. the mount which is kind of cr like they're bigger than Actinol. I know this is very much a me thing, but I'm very excited for the small monsters in this game. <laughs> in which case, where is Aptonoth? Oh, I'm excited for the endemic life. I'm excited to be able to go around and collect them for my uh, my room again. <laughs> you know, we we lightly talked about it, but right at the beginning, they show these pangolin guys. They're just absolutely covered in little birds for no reason in particular. And there will definitely be a super and rare one that, that you have to wait ages to spawn and then slowly sneak up on it and then capture it. God, it, it is incredible how much you uh -huh. can get out of what is essentially a minute of very mysterious kind of vagueness. Like, there's not even any combat. There's not even, like, a definitive new large monster doing its thing. There's the bears kind of running, but, like, there's nothing to go on here, yet there's so much to go on. That's the other big thing that I love about this is, unlike normal Monster Hunter trailers and, and footage and stuff, the hunter does not attempt to fight at any point. It is always running like it is concerned. Yeah, that's true. I, I think well, that is some I think there is about a, the danger of the world. I feel like. Oh, they just wanted a nice cinematic shot. I think it's yeah, probably I mean, sure. more yeah. accurate. No, 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 no. I no, think no. both okay. are possible. I think there's going to be big pros and cons to fighting in the lightning. Yeah, storm. like lightning hitting you, but then lightning cool. And lightning hitting the monster <laughs> that you're fighting. Right. Monster. Unless it's yeah, unless it's a lightning cool. monster. That'd be bad. My God, a lightning bolt hit, hits Rajang. Oh God. <laughs> oh, we're fucked. <laughs> I mean, the most obvious. Straight up interpretation of the logo is is two big main dragons, one sky based, one earth based for for baby dragons. Yeah, that's, that's like that, it does yeah. kind of look like the bottom one has an egg in the I six. Guess it does, yeah. So it's narwhal all over again, is what you're saying? Yeah, that that's the thing that does concern me is two serpents like that with kind of the threat of children does feel Ibushi Nauri weirdly. Even just the storms mm -hmm. and stuff is kind of their thing as well. True, it's a bit too similar. I hope it's a bit different. What if the four circular snakes are representing each corner of the map, which is a different biome, and then the middle is where they are, which is where the big hole is? Yeah, I could totally see that that big circle thing. You go down so into like, it. Oh, so then it would be the four flagships. It'd be one of each biome, each one being one of the four circles type of thing. You know. If you could force any monster to be in the game, what are you what are you choosing? And you can't say is your Rathalos. <laughs> Golden Rathian. <laughs> <laughs>
I, it's really hard not to just go with my favorite one, so I'm going to go with a slight variation, which is Ruster Ambrose, just because he's obviously notably larger, and I think really big Duramboros would be really fun in this area size. Yeah, I mean, you do need this kind of space for him. Yeah, and also, like, just imagining the physics of him being able to actually break stuff by swinging his tail would be so cool. Like, you might obviously think I'm going to say Brachidios, Raging Brachidios, but in reality, what I'm going to say is, can you, can you, can you predict me? Ignactor. No, what? When have I ever shown... I mean, he's great, but when have I ever shown a particular affinity for Ignactor? Izuchi. Quite a lot. Damn! Um, God, I love that raptor so much. So much. So if I could force any modern making making of a monster, it's undoubtedly Malfestio. Yeah, I did consider him, but like he feels like... They would have to really mess with his visuals to make him fit in this world. Yeah, but imagine he can hit your mount with the confusion, so you either have inverted controls on the mount, or you demount and have normal hunter controls unless you get hit again. You know, he's got- he's- he is the most unique monster, and I will maintain that. He has, like, multiple mechanics only he does. I'm thinking a Latrian for me. Okay! Oh, I predicted well, okay. that! Predict Alright, guys, story time! Before <laughs> before we start down and uh, had this, this little powwow wild style, okay? Mm -hmm. I was, wasn't here, and me and Carl were having a chat, and I was like, what do you think he's going to say when we get to this point? And we were both like, it's going to be a Latrion. <laughs> Look, Fatalis is close. That that fight just taught me how to use dual blades, and I just oh, love yeah. them. Since. I mean, for all the shit that people give it about the elemental requirements, the fight itself, the I moveset loved it. was so good. I loved it. Yeah, I DPS it right. check, swap the right elements, pay attention. You go in there, and you don't know what you're doing. you got to learn the mechanics. And then it's just like a timer you must beat. Learn the mechanics. The correct way to beat a Latrion is to use a raw greatsword, cart twice to Eschaton Judgment, and then kill him before he does the third one. That is the uh, that, that is, is the option. true warrior's path <laughs> that I took anyway, on that fight. <laughs> if you're thinking there's going to be a bunch of elements and stuff, he would, you know, it's an answer that would fit really well. Yeah. And if we're talking terraforming and stuff, I mean, I I want a Latrion, but for all statuses is what I want. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm not give me a harder like version. Species or a variant type thing. That'd be so. Hell cool. yeah. Actually, just I, uh, it's it's long overdue for a new black dragon. It is, to be fair. Yeah. Sure. I All mean, right. if it is ancient civilization, like locked vault, who knows? That that could be exactly what we're looking at. Yeah, I do de definitively think the implication of wilds is we are literally exploring this for the first time. Mm -hmm. I, like, I, there's just I'm going to sneak in one little mention of another monster here, but not. We don't need to talk about for, like, just one interaction. I want to think about Zamtrios bouncy ball mode, but with physics so that he actually bounces in the direction of the angle of the land. <laughs> So he just like goes like diagonally around and he looks confused. He can go down the half pipe of the center. All right, hit me with your with your final thoughts. It looks like a ridiculous departure from what we've had in Monster Hunter before, which is exactly what people said about World when we first saw anything about it. And I trust the team to deliver us a very enjoyable experience no matter what. I just have no idea what it's going to be like compared to what we're used uh, to. At a certain point, I've been playing yeah. Sunbreak long enough to really get used to having two loadouts for a combat loadout, multiple build setups, you know, having a counter on so many different weapons and obviously dual blades, losing these things. Are we going to go back to like a purist monster that's actually quite comparatively simple to play? I hope not. And I hope that we have weapon swapping or something complicated mechanically to satisfy me. I wouldn't call World and Ice Pond simple. I wouldn't call them simple, but compared, they're certainly That's simpler. True. I mean, I'm I'm definitely team. I've I've had my fill of wire bugs. I, I don't need any more wire bugs. Fair enough, but I need something interesting to, you know, mechanically. I'm tired of wirefall, especially. To be honest, like it was a cool concept at first, but once once the fights were built around it, it became like a weird cat and mouse sort of back and forth. Like this isn't really fun for either of us. It's just a part of yeah, it. Well, that's now. the thing. I hope they ironically pull back the power creep because yeah. the player speed and power in Sunbreak caused the monster speed and power to have to match it, and mm -hmm. the fights are just like really a million massive. miles an hour. Yeah. And that's why I need a counter. You should give me a counter. If <laughs> Dual Blades gets a counter. I'm sort of, I am sort of hoping this is the game that does something we've talked about before too, where it makes the hunter weaker relative to the monsters than we normally are. Cause like, that's, that's what I was, I was sort of trying to imply with the, uh, the, how they're always running away in this trailer is like, what if a Rathalos is like a real proper threat in this game? I mean, it will be if you go fight it as soon as you start. 
Well, sure. I, I just I just mean like I, I want it I want it to be a a more challenging scale of like it has to be a, a, a proper journey to get through rather than just yep I can fight that yep I can fight that no problem. <laughs> I'm the best in the world. I think any monster hunter that we start playing and struggle with is overtuned. Yeah, that's not that's not what I'm, I'm, I'm like. I'm not saying you should fight Rathalos in the first five minutes. I guess what I just mean is like, imagine the Monster Hunter game where the small monsters are the same tier as what like the the lowest tier large monsters are normally. I think that'd be fun. Alrighty then, that's a little back and forth, forthy backy of wilds. Whatever's gonna it happen, wild. it's gonna be a long six months from our information, and then a long six months until 2025. Which hopefully it will release two days into, so we don't have to wait longer than yeah, that. Yeah, just like immediately. Just instantly. Yeah. Like, at, on New midnight. Years. Like, the <laughs> countdown is to Wilds, not 2025. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but no, there is a, a lot to uh, still discuss, theorize, and talk about, and it's going to happen. All of it. Every single little bit. All right, everybody. Like if you've enjoyed this, subscribe to the bell for more. Consider supporting the future of the channel on Patreon down below. And until we meet again... A oh, good bye. Goodbye. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is, uh, goodbye. <laughs>